Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's Friday, and you know what that means. Another yes. study of the book of Revelation of the Jesus Christ. Um, we are on chapter 8. As you get on, get your Bibles, get your pencils. There's a lot of good stuff in here. Um, we'll spend about, probably not quite an hour, studying this. Um, so sign on, invite family and friends uh, to join us, and you can always share it after we're done also. So feel free. Um, right here, I'm, I'm with Vicki and Donna. Uh, we're waiting on a couple more people said they were coming. We'll see. If not, we'll go ahead and get started. Oops, hello. Oh, I'm That's sorry. Fine. Oh, see right there? See, I want you to see this. This is our Sunday school room, the junior and youth Sunday school room. And they painted the wall right before COVID. <laughs> so we're we're meeting in here today. We got a big old mess out in the kitchen because we're getting ready for our women's conference. We're doing our women's conference next weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So please make plans to attend. It's going to be so much fun. Um, we got some good speakers uh, in me. <laughs> good speakers. I don't. I'm not sure why she asked me, but okay. Now I have to do is come up with the message. Lord, help me! I need a message for some Friday. <laughs> But it's going to be a lot of fun. It always is. So uh, it's open to the public. There is no charge. We will be doing uh, Dessert. desserts on Friday. Uh, uh, a breakfast. Pastries. Yeah. Continental, continental, continental breakfast. breakfast. Let's get, yeah. A continental breakfast on Saturday morning. <laughs> and then we'll do be doing a light lunch on Saturday also. And then Sunday morning during our regular service time at 10 o'clock. Um, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Please be praying for that while you're out there in the amongst the world. We've been trying to fix our prayer team messages and it's not working real good. I can't, Still can't get I can't get habit. I can't get one two of the people need to be off of it because they're okay. at work and Fine. constantly. Just getting, add a new one. Like go yeah. to your phone and, and say I'm sending this one a message, I'm gonna send this one a message, and just add the ones you want and then boom, that's it. And that's just the, start a new one. Just started, just right. start well, I did that, and then, and then I got a phone call saying that it's somebody terrible. else that needed to be taken off, so I have to, uh, start. I have to make a whole oh, new one again, but okay. that's okay. Yeah. I, I, I didn't want to take it off of group because I know we like to talk to each other about mm -hmm. the prayers and the requests and how, the prayers that are being answered and stuff, so I didn't want to take it off of group, and even doing that, I couldn't get rid of the two people that had asked to be removed from the public message. They're still on the team, and I still contact them privately but they just can't have their phones going they bing bing yeah. bing because because when i put out a prayer request these ladies are on it and i get messages back immediately i'm praying i'm praying i'm praying and sometimes with a whole prayer and sometimes with two or three comments and stuff so i want to be um conscious of those poor people that have to that have to work can't have their phones at work so anyway i'm uh looking for maria Maria, where are you? And then um, next Friday night is our women's conference, and I think we're not doing the study on Friday afternoon. Right. So I, we prepare. Yeah, yeah cuz we'll have to decorate de decorate the church. Well, we'll be decorating today, but we'll have to and do get tables and yeah. stuff set up and all this stuff we'll still have to do um, Friday in per in prepare preparation for the conference. Hey ladies, okay. Hey. We, got, hey. we have I'm Christy and Amy that have made it. I'm so glad you are here. Hey, she's got a Revelation book. Hey. I do. I, I, this is yours. This this one actually belongs to Christy. Hey. So. Well, no yeah. wonder I'm at home looking for it. Second oh, it's because I have it. You can get it. I'll get it. How you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good. There. Hey. I, all right. Sorry for the interruption. That's all right. We're live. Maria's here. Yay, Maria. Uh -huh. You're the one we were waiting on. Um, Christy and Amy are here also in in live and in person. Um, <laughs> we're going to start on chapter 8. All right. Y'all ready? Yep. Yeah. Get your Bibles out. Ooh, Lordy. This is one of those that... Um, Last one, uh, This is one of those that... Um, I won't let me share it from the video. Yeah. You have to put it on your... Somehow you have to do it. I'm not sure. I'll figure you it out. An extra pen. Uh -huh. I got lots of pens somewhere. Okay. Okay. It's, um, 
this is the beginning of the trumpets, the seventh seal, which opens the trumpets, which opens the woes. Um, it's getting a little intense. It's getting a little serious. We've talked about the seals. We've talked about the 144,000. We've talked about the tribulation martyrs. Um, we've gone through all of these things. Eight. Uh, chapter eight. And now we are on the seventh seal, which is the prelude to the seven trumpets. Um, and as we go through these, I want you to be thinking about Old Testament scriptures that you have read and studied that refer to these trumpets, to these disasters, to these calamities and judgments that God is coming on. Um, that's right, their men's fellowship is tonight, uh, 6.30, so you know, invite your guys. If you want glasses. <laughs> How many pair do you need, Amy? Oh, okay. Amy's asking for glasses. She's got one on her face and one on her head. And I'm going, well, I guess you could use mine, but... I can't see y'all, but I can see this. <laughs> I, I am not laughing at you. I'm laughing she with you. Yeah, right. find the same pair and no one on her head. The, these are my prescription glasses, and I can't use them to read anymore. I've had to go get... 300, 350 yeah. readers. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh. yeah, I'm there until I'm like on 250. <laughs> all right, all right, you all ready? Ready. All right, <laughs> chapter eight. When he opened the seventh seal, who is he? Who's opening the seals? Jesus. 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 That's yep. right, because he's the only one worthy to open the seals. Mm -hmm. it says, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour, and I saw seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints before the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. And then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. And the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of all the trees burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning was thrown into the fire, thrown in with burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Mm -hmm. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from her heaven, burning like a torch. And it fell on a third of the rivers and the springs of the water, and the name of the star was Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died with, from the water because it was made bitter. Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars to the so that a third of them were darkened, a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked, and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels were about to sound. Mm, wow. This is getting pretty intense. Mm -hmm. uh, one commentary I had read talked about the seals were the judgments of man, or were the judgments viewed from man's perspective. And the trumpets were viewed from heaven's perspective. And the woes were the culmination of all of them. Now, I was going along with that until I got reading these trumpets. They're pretty much more, they're a lot more intense than the seals were. Mm -hmm. I mean, the seals are serious, and we found out last last uh, two weeks ago that a quarter of the world's population is going to be killed during the seals. Mm -hmm. two, uh, like two billion people at this time would be dead immediately when the seals are opened. So you've got to, you know, these are serious with the wars and uh, the stuff that's going to happen during the seals. Mm -hmm. But once you get to the trumpets, they are catastrophic mm -hmm. yeah. mm. um, and then we haven't even gotten to chapter 9 which is demonic wow. so we'll get to when we get to chapter 9 we'll really be getting into that so let me let me share with you some thoughts about chapter 8 um, these are the birth birth pains of the divine wrath of God remember we talked about how 
labor, if, if you've ever done natural childbirth, labor, it starts mild and then it intensifies and pains become stronger and quicker, come quicker together and stronger and stronger and stronger mm -hmm. until the child is born. Well, these are, we talked about the seals were the beginning mm -hmm. of the birth pains. These are the birth pains and soon we'll get into the intensive labor. Um, they increase with frequency and intensity but remember, we're talking about a holy, sovereign God setting into motion the catastrophic final judgments which are going to destroy, ultimately, most of the population on earth. He's not a happy guy. Okay? Um, in Matthew 9, or 10, chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus warns us, he said, but do not fear those who will kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're not to be afraid of this. We're not to be afraid of death, but we need to be paying attention, right? Mm -hmm. We talked before about the reason we were given this prophecy is so we can, one, prepare, mm -hmm. two, proclaim, mm -hmm. share with our friends, mm -hmm. and preach, mm -hmm. right? So that we can, our friends and family don't have to go through the wrath of God because they'll understand uh, the mercy that God has shown us over and over again. This is so cool. i got people on both sides today. So excuse me. <laughs> proclaim, preach, and prepare. Prepare. Prepare is number prepare, one. Prepare, proclaim, and How preach. can we be the hands of God on this earth during catast cat catastrophes? If we're not prepared, That's true. how can we help the people in Lake Charles if we haven't prepared by buying extra food, extra mm -hmm. water, you know, supplies and stuff to send to, to where the, the catastrophe is and over in the Lake Charles all the way up, all the way up through North Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're, we're to be the church and we're to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, mm -hmm. set the captive free and preach the good news. And if we're not prepared, if we're not paying attention to the prophecies, mm -hmm. we won't be prepared. Mm -hmm. um, there's a horse trainer that call, has a saying, it says, prior proper preparation prevents poor performance. Oh. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, and that's us. We need to be prior, we need to be preparing <clears throat> now so that when these tragedies come, whether it's in our lifetime or in our children's lifetime or our great, we don't know when this is gonna happen. But when it does, our as believers, we need to be prepared to minister to God's people because we're not afraid of what can kill the body. Yes. We're more afraid of what can kill the body and the soul Sorry. and send it to hell, right? Yeah. Yes. So remember, but remember this, in God's wrath, his mercy is still showing. And we need to watch for his mercy even in these calamities. Um, there's going to be millions of Gentiles and hundreds of thousands of Jews that come to faith in Christ. During Those are the tribulation martyrs. They're going to become believers in Christ and they're going to be killed for their faith. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, why would God do this? Why would God's wrath be so intense and so destructive? And you've got to go back to the root cause. And the root is sin. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple, okay? Yeah. Um, when we talk about the destruction and death of millions of people, it doesn't just it just doesn't fit with the picture that most of us had in our mind of who God is. Why mm -hmm. would a good God do this, right? Mm -hmm. Why would a good God let calamities happen and destruction and earthquakes and stuff, uh, tornadoes and hurricanes? Um, but God is actively working in our lives every single day. He's not just standing back and waiting for us. Mm -mm. Um, he's not waiting to punish us. His mercy is evident every single day with the coming of Jesus, who came to die as the sin offering for all men mm -hmm. and women. So if, if his mercy has already been put out there and we reject his mercy, what else can he do? He's given and given and right. shown and told through millions of people of him and his son of who he is where yes where we will be with mm -hmm. him yes. in the end, and people are just denying it well, yes. so, so many pe people want to believe that you're i'm a good person i will go to heaven mm -hmm. god is a good god right. he is a good god but, but he is a parts. sovereign so, right. holy right. god yes. right. and we forget that part mm -hmm. yes um he will not mix with sin. No. Yeah. That's yes. why it's going to be destroyed. Yeah. That's right. And what has brought about all the destruction is sin, period. Yeah. Yeah. Sin, 
Since sin entered into the Garden of Eden, it has grown like a cancer. Mm -hmm. Man's yeah. wickedness has grown continuously from the very first fall, from the very first <laughs> with Adam when they contacted with yeah. Satan mm -hmm. in the Garden of Eden. God is a holy God. He cannot abide with sin. Mm -hmm. There is no part of a man's existence today that is not corrupted by sin. Yeah. Every yeah. single part. Yeah. From our work to our home lives to our yeah. entertainment to... Uh, there is nothing. Our clothing, our mm -hmm. music, it's all been corrupted. Um, I want you to think back just like 30, 40 years ago um, about what we've accepted as a nation. All right, homosexuality is not only okay; it's illegal and it's protected. And if you are disagree, you are the one that's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. God is very clear mm -hmm. on what He says about exactly. that. That's the first thing. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. very abortion. clear. Yep. Abortion, abortion is legal, yes. right? Yep. And yeah. now murdering unborn children is celebrated. In fact, there, there's a push yes. to allow mothers to let their child children die. After birth, if the abortion was unsuccessful, mm -hmm. yeah. we'll just take that baby and put him in the corner and he'll eventually die. And there's something <gasps> about pedophiles too. Oh, now. wait, I, I'm getting to that oh, yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Pedophilia is mm -hmm. now being rebranded and decriminalized, and they're calling it MAP minor attracted persons. Are you oh, serious? That makes me sick. That's horrible. It's been legalized in California. What? If you are less than 10 years older than the person that you've attacked, you are no longer required to register as a sex offender. If your victim is 14, 15, 16, or 17, still a minor, and you are less than 24, 25, 26, and 27, and you have consensual sex with these minors, you're no longer considered a pedophile. I'm sorry, but a 23-year-old and a 14-year-old... Um, they're not going to... That, that, wow. I've been researching it because it's very personal to me. It's, it's and, now um, it, it's It's... It's got me sick. It is. It's really ridiculous. Now, rioting. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just keeps going and going. We'll and go going. back to map. Minor attracted persons. Once you give something an acronym, hmm. right, then it becomes easy to say. Instead of saying, hello, pedophile, right, we say, well, they're map. Yeah. And it becomes part of the mm -hmm. LGBTQ plus whatever the rest of the letters are. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And it becomes mm -hmm. accepted behavior. I, it just makes me nauseous. It's easy, easy to yes. accept once, mm -hmm. it gets a, once it gets that acronym. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. rioting, the destruction of property, assault, and even murder are becoming acceptable in the name of social justice. Right. This is sin. Right. This is man's unchanging, ever depraved, continuing down that path it's of sad. sin. It's mm -hmm. worse now than it was when I was 20. It's worse. Mm -hmm. It was worse when I was 20 than it was when my parents were 20. Mm -hmm. And it's continuing and it's snowballing. And sooner or later... And it's going to be worse when Elizabeth is 20. Sooner or later, God is going to say enough. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is it. Right. We're done. I can no longer stomach this. Go to Jeremiah 19 if you, if you can. This will blow your mind. If it doesn't, I I don't I can't explain it. That's all right. <laughs> I have it marked. That's the only reason I can find it. Jeremiah, which one? Nineteen. I'm gonna to go to chapter four, verse four and five. Nineteen, you said four and five. If this, if this is not marked in red or highlighted in your Bible, I think it needs to be, I think, personally. It's marked as highlighted in all of mine. Well, I, uh, Jeremiah what? Chap chapter 19. 4 and 5. Uh-huh, verse 4 and 5. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Normally I don't make them turn to these verses, but it is incredibly crazy what this scripture says. Verse 4 says, Because you have forsaken me and made this an alien place, because they have burnt incense in it to other gods whom, have need, whom, they, whom neither they, their fathers, nor the kings of Judah have known, and filled this room with the blood of the incense, they have also built the high places of Baal to turn, burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings to Baal, which I did not command or speak, 
nor did it come to my mind. Mm. God didn't even conceive that they would be this wicked to murder their own children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. God looks at us with abortion the same way. He yeah. said, I cannot believe, believe what you're doing. And in Jeremiah, the same verses in Jeremiah 22, verses 33 to 35. 20. I'm sorry, 32. Perfect. 32? <clears throat> yep. Chapter 32? Chapter oh, 30, chapter Jeremiah, chapter 32. <laughs> Verse 33 to 35. That's some dyslexia going on here. That's all right. And they have turned to me the back and not the face, though I taught them, rising in early morning, teaching them that they have not listened to receive instruction, but they have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to defile it. Mm -hmm. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnon, Hinnon, and to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire to Moloch, which I did not command, nor did it come to my mind that they should do this abomination and cause Judah to sin. Mm. Wow. God is shocked. Yes. Can you imagine something that was so horrible that God himself would be, I cannot believe you would do this. It boggles my mind that we could do something so horrendous mm. that even that God Himself could not imagine that we would do that. that. Would do that. Yeah, wow. it just blows my mind, and I think it's wrenched one other time, but y'all can research that. Wow. And, and it's the only time He ever says, "I didn't tell you to do this," and it didn't even enter my mind that you would or do this. this. Right. Yeah. I cannot believe He's not sitting in heaven go, right now, going, "I." How much longer do I have to wait? Mm. He's saying how angry he is in verse 32. Exactly. I mean, he is, yeah. yeah. He yes, is he livid. Mm -hmm. I've taught yeah. you to face my altar. And you've turned your back on it. Not only that, you, but you put your abominations in my churches. Mm. And we've done that. Um, you know, I, sin yeah. is... I just read our uh -huh. So, So here's the deal. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. <coughs> it begins in the churches. If the churches are not preaching and teaching the word of God, mm -hmm. if they're preaching and teaching another message, they're not telling you that sin is sin and you need to quit, you need to repent, you need to turn back to God. They're not teaching that. There's a scripture that says, um, where are my priests that weep between the altar and the people? I remember reading that, but I don't right. it's, I it might be in <clears throat> Joel or Habakkuk, one of those two. He's, he's looking for the mm -hmm. church leaders that are going to stand up for what is right. Mm -hmm. If we don't do it, we deserve judgment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, it's not, it's not anything to, I mean, it, it, this is so serious. Totally. And we're reading what the judgment's going to be in Revelation. And go to uh, Romans chapter 1. <clears throat> Verse 18. <sighs> Sorry, I get, do get wound up with this. Oh, man, I'm and, telling and you. And I want you to read all the way through the rest. We're going to start in verse 18. I want you to read through chapter 1 and into chapter 2, verse 16. I'm going to skip around in here, but you guys can read all this yourself. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. So he's going to, mm -hmm. that unrighteousness, because word, you know, teachers, preachers, you're held yeah. to a higher standard. Yes, yes. Yeah, you I are. mean, this is nothing to fool around with. Yes. yes. Um, uh, no, excuse me. Verse 20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and the God Godhead, so they are, are, are without excuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then go on down. Um, uh, I mean, you can read this whole thing. It's whole, talking about people that are sinning. It said even, or chap, verse 28, no, chapter 1, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God that gave them over to be 
to a debased mind to do those things which are not fit, fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil, vine, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, mm -hmm. that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but they also approve of the practice of them. Mm -hmm. This is serious stuff. Very serious. Right? Verse chapter 2. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O oh man, whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. And we know that the judgment of God is according to the truth against those who practice such things. And you can go on and continue reading in chapter chapter 2. And then verse 16, it says, In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Mm. God is coming to judge us mm -hmm. based upon the words of Christ in his gospel. And if you have any a doubt of what that ta is talking about, you need to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yeah. And you need to read those gospels and you need to understand what the the, the uh, yeah. beatitudes are. And you need to understand what the law is that Jesus was giving the Christians. Not the 700 and whatever it is, Jewish laws. Jewish, yeah. We're talking about what Jesus said so, was the law. Yeah. <clears throat> if we're not following this, then we are in trouble. Yes. And even those people who believe that they are saved are going to find out, maybe not. Because mm -hmm. he said, people will come and say, I knew you. And he says, I don't know you. And I'll never need you. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're talking about serious stuff. It, mankind, are, we have been storing up the wrath of God since creation. And he is so patient. And his mercy is new every day. And he begs us and he pleads with us. He shows us all of creation because in creation, his attributes are shown. His goodness, his kindness, his, his mercy, grace. his grace, mm -hmm. right? He's showing mm -hmm. us all that. And once we learn the truth of Christ, if we don't accept him, repent from our sins and start walking in the way that God wants us to walk. Mm -hmm. Now, are we going to make mistakes? Absolutely, yes. we're going to make mistakes. Okay, we Every do. <laughs> we will yell at our husbands. We'll yes. kick the dogs. We'll... we'll break something that we shouldn't will will hurt our children whatever we're going to mess up but against <laughs> you and you only have i sinned lord yeah yes. and we've got to understand that every time we sin it's against a holy god mm -hmm. and this is serious stuff you guys you know i i, I don't want to keep beating on this but i want you to understand this is he has created us to be something so marvelous and something so incredible to do his will on earth for us to not do it when yeah. we know it yeah. is sin yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you know and it breaks my heart that that's <sighs> normal behavior mm -hmm. especially in this country today I'm sorry. Go back to Revelation. You don't have to turn there, but you can go Revelation 1, verse 3. Remember what it said? Blessed are those who read this, who hear this, mm -hmm. and do what this prophecy yeah. says. Mm -hmm. We're being blessed because we're reading it, we're doing it, and we're hearing what it says. Mm -hmm. It's just because we're beginning to, un you know, and I'm not going to tell you why I got this book figured out. I'm beginning to understand, to understand some of it. Yeah. I'm beginning to understand the purpose behind it. And the desire of God in our learning it, but it's those are all blessings things into to us. perspective. It's, it's it's putting what you know, what you've read, and it's making it's making sense to. I was about making sense. Yeah. yeah. So what's <laughs> happening and why His revelation is. It's, when we un know? when we understand mm. that this mm. is the only mm. book that's mm. called the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. His complete and total character is being revealed to us in this book. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's the only one that does that. It's important that we get it. Yes, It really is important that we get it. Oh, so how are we That's being... Yeah, <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> how are we how are we blessed from this book okay we're blessed because we're studying the book we're trusting the Holy Spirit to teach us and we spend time meditating on this book and I know that y'all don't study it every day like you know and I don't study it every day but you don't study it in the depth that I do but I'm, I believe that God's still bringing this stuff to your mind. Mm -hmm. You're still yes. going, wait, right. right. that's Definitely. what this was. I understand this. That yeah. makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. I do that every day. And isn't that a revelation? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Here's another revelation. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right, so this is how we're being blessed. Holy Spirit's teaching us all things. And that's, that's what we want. We want to know what it is God has for us, what he wants us to do. Mm -hmm. So in here, verse 1, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for half an hour. Now, we just, we've just learned about the four and twenty elders and the angels upon angels and the multitudes around the throne, all crying holy, 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 and worthy, and all, all of these different, singing this song to the Lord without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Silence. Mm -hmm. A day is as a thousand years to the Lord. So what's a half an hour? I don't know. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I mean, it's just not a half an hour of our time. Half an hour of the Lord's time would be 70 years, 50 years. Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. so, a thousand, a thousand years. So they were quiet know, for to get my head no that long. They were quiet for a long time. Somebody will do. Somebody can do the math for me. Wow. Um, mm. Well, I was thinking about seconds. That's a long time yep. to be quiet. Yeah, this time is, yeah, this time I don't is know if I could be quiet more. that long. Oh, but the in, all of creation, all of heaven is silent. Absolutely silent. And what are they thinking? Think about this for a second. Here's all this glorious God and it's just been so awesome and he's been doing all these great things and I'm just worshiping him and he's so spectacular and all of a sudden it's like, who? <gasps> They're filled with the spirit and just peace. Think it's peace? Oh, I think it's go. fear. I Not think fear, it's just but I think it's a fear. It's kind of a fear it's, or like a it's an anticipation yeah. of about what's to happen. Yeah. 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 He's like, oh, not, he's, not, he's opening that last season. Not yeah. like a fear, yeah. fear, yeah. but like how yeah. we are supposed to fear the Lord. Awe. In, intense yeah. awe. Mm -hmm. It's like it's it's I can you know, and I have a I have a child mind, a small mind, and so I can see them going, Okay, oh, Dad just stood up and took off his belt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something's yeah, about yeah. that. Uh -huh. right. yeah. Yeah. And okay. he knows something is coming. They know something is okay. coming. Yeah. And then I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. These seven angels stand before God. They are the archangels. They stand there. They're not part of the worship team. They're not part of anything else. They are standing, waiting on God. And when you wait on God, you have to think of it as... Um, like a waiter in a restaurant that is assigned to your table mm -hmm. and he stands back with a towel over his arm mm -hmm. waiting, waiting, anticipating looking for whatever it is you're going to need mm -hmm. so think about this as the angels there's seven angels standing and waiting on God because they know their job and once they are handed the trumpets they were given the trumpets they knew exactly what was happening they knew, they knew that they knew. We've talked about trumpets and the, 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 the incredible stuff that trumpets are done, are, are used. Um, let's see. Um, it, here's a scripture, Zephaniah 1.7. It says, be silent in the day of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, in verse 15 and 14, 14 and 15, it says, the great, and this is the great and holy sovereign day of the Lord. So he's taught, you know, there's scripture in the Old Testament that says there was, be silent before the holy, the holy God. And so the readers of this book would understand what that meant. It meant, here comes the wrath of God. We need to stand silent before him. There's no excuses anymore. All right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. And Zechariah 2.13 says, Be silent, for he is aroused, mm. bringing wrath. This, is the, this great God is now stirred up <laughs> through the ages of his grace and mercy. His patience has run out, and the cup of iniquity is full, and he rises to bring judgment. He's had enough. Daddy done stood up. Yep. And he took off his belt. Right? Uh-huh. 
Um, in the Greek language, the seven angels are standing before the throne since the fall of Satan and a third of the angels. They're not guarding God, but they've mm. been standing there since the third of the angels have fallen. Mm. They're like, they've been waiting. I'm waiting because sooner or later he is going to handle this problem, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The trumpets. Uh, all right, remember, trumpets were used to call people to assembly, right? They sounded a battle cry in the time of war. They give direction to a large group of people to tell them to go left or right or where to gather, right? Think about the trumpets in the cavalry. Um, they're used to alert to alert. danger, mm -hmm. right, or judgment. They were celebrate. They used to celebrate holy days and sacred events. They were used to make an announcement. They were used to praise God. Mm -hmm. They were used as a signal to humanity and the signal of the coronation of a king. Yeah. There's a reason he used uh, trumpets. Mm -hmm. It's to oh. get our attention, get your atten yeah, right? Attention. Yeah. To let us know something's coming and coronating his, crowning his Don't king. Don't they use trumpets to like sound off to wake up people in the military, like yeah. the army? Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. An, uh -huh. it's an alert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, so alert. Yep. Att pay attention. Yeah. Hey, Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul's watching us from Uganda. You're very welcome to join us. <laughs> um, so God is saying through the trumpets, he's about to go to war against the inhabitants on this earth. He's done. Yeah. He's done. Verse 3, he said, And another angel, having the golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar before the throne. Remember when Moses built the tabernacle in the, in the wilderness and the temples were built? They were built as a type of holy throne room, from mm -hmm. a heavenly throne room. Mm -hmm. They were built according to God's spe specifications. Mm -hmm. And he wanted the golden altar, the, the table of incense, mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. So this was... this. This is the real thing, right? Um, in the temple, uh, uh, in the temple, the priest would take the coals from the brazen altar, the altar of sacrifice, and place them on the altar of incense, and that smoke would rise up. And the people who were outside of the temple could see that smoke rise up, and they would, they knew that it represented their prayers that were being carried into the presence of God. When we, when we see the smoke of incense rising up into the heavens, we know that our sacrifices are pleasing to the Lord and he's receiving our prayers. Okay? Is, is what the people, that was the symbolism that the people had. Um, here he said he was given much incense. <laughs> it means God has put so much incense in his hands. And he continues to do it as long as the fire is burning. Mm -hmm. All right? This angel would offer it up with the prayers of the saints on the altar before the throne. Remember, uh, Revelations 5.8, it talks about the elders having golden bowls full of incense, mm -hmm. which was the prayers, prayers of the saints. Mm -hmm. Right? We talked about God taking our... Our prayers. Our silly prayers. Mm -hmm. Some of the, you know, it's like, oh, I can't believe I just prayed. And now that I know how serious, it's like, I can't believe I prayed for a parking spot. But yeah. that prayer itself mm -hmm. is part of the incense that's going to be burial for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of those prayers that we have prayed and, and haven't seen answers to, they're all part of this. Those prayers that we have prayed and we've forgotten we prayed them and we forgot to thank God for intervening or doing those things, they're all part of this all part of this incense before the throne and then he says once the in smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saint ascended before God from the angel's hands so the smoke has gone up everybody has seen our, the prayers being risen rising up to God and says verse 5 then the angel took the censer and filled it from with fire from the altar and threw it to the earth the verbiage used here to throw it to the earth is an intense violent throw it's not just tossing it to earth it is intentionally grounding it i mean it's it's a supernatural violent throw i mean right. I, I, mm -hmm. I and it is intending great harm when he threw it he intended to do cause damage um so it would be something like a a meteor type it could be because it it's the, the, yeah right this is one of those Thunder things and loud rumblings i mean we all right mm -hmm. no bad weather's coming or whatever and so. we we know that there's a lot of um 
imagery used in the scriptures. And John, writing this book, had never experienced the stuff that we've experienced with missiles and rockets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So this could be a rocket. Mm -hmm. This could be a, a hydrogen bomb. This could be... Right. You know, it could be an asteroid that's coming. We don't know, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But it's going to fall to Earth with such intensity that it's going to destroy, cause an earthquake and lightning and thunder and, and noise. Um, the Remember the, the saints in six, verse six, or chapter 6, verse 10 of Revelation says, How long are you, until you judge this? How long are you going to let us be continue to be martyrs and he said until the fullness of time right until the fullness of martyrs um but that tells us that those prayers of the martyrs that were under the altar are going to be answered it tells us of the goodness of god and his willingness in his character is such that he is going to answer even those final prayers mm -hmm. they're still going to be answered um, but he answers those in his own time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not our timing. Um, and there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. This is not the great earthquake. This is an earthquake. All right. Um, it's a signal of his avenging wrath. <sighs> After the six seals in the previous chapter. The earth is pretty much decimated, but there was a pause in heaven, and there's still more to come. This act of throwing is a supernatural fury. The censer to the earth releases the trumpet bowl, trumpets and bowls of judgment. Up until here, the first trumpet hasn't sounded, but this releases the trumpets and the bowls of judgment. Um, think about a Roman candle. All right, y'all do fireworks. Right? I hate fireworks. <laughs> they make me crazy. I, I, I grew up in a country that was war-torn, and fireworks, I hate the noises of them. Mm -hmm. you, you can't tell whether it's bombs mm -hmm. or gunshot, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 I, and I just, even my dog hates them. Anyway, so think about a Roman candle. When you light it, there's a pause, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the pause in heaven. Candle's lit, but it's, there's a pause and then it shoots out explosion after explosion. And often in the Roman candles, they strengthen and they come faster, right? I, you know, you'll get pow, 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 pow right? Yeah. Until they've all, yes, it's the beginning of, it's, this is the beginning of God's wrath, Marie. Um, so here, so if you think of it, like that's how these trumpets are going to happen and the woes are going to happen they're going to happen faster and faster and faster and faster and each one's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger um the first four trumpets that we're going to read about today target natural things on the earth and god is punishing the world and preparing god's covenant people for their messiah without the destruction people aren't going to turn to god I got so mad at a preacher one time, and he said, you know, without an economic collapse in the United States, we'll never have revival again. And I got so mad. I said, that's not true. We can mm -hmm. have revival without that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he was absolutely right. Because until we're desperate, we don't turn to the Lord. Right. Yeah. Now, each one of us in here has had that desperate story, yes. right? Yes. Where yeah. we we did not come to the Lord yes. until we were desperate. Yeah. Yep. Neither will the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. All right? So... Uh, I kept telling my kids as they were growing up, I said, you don't have to bang your head into the wall. I did it, and I'm telling you, it hurts. Don't do it. I'm telling you. Of course, you. they still had to bang their head into the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Long they way. still do. Yeah. They still have to, yeah. unfortunately. Fortunately, we have the opportunity to teach them right so that when they do, they recognize mm -hmm. it. They go, oh, I don't need to do that again. <laughs> um, but he's trying, to, he's trying to get his covenant people to be prepared for their Messiah. Remember, the nation of Israel was born. Remember how it was born. Moses was sent to deliver these people out of Egypt. How did he do it? By sending plagues. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sent plagues. Plagues and plagues and plagues. Ten plagues, right? And these ten plagues are pretty similar to what's happening here. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see how they tie together as we read through them. You, you think about the ten plagues. 
and how does it re apply here? How, how is this similar? Um, remember, everything that happened in the Old Testament is a type of, the, of what's to come. Okay, mm -hmm. the you know type of the savior, type of temple, a type of all of these yeah. things. So, mm -hmm. the Old Testament pro prophets understood that that there was a time coming when God would judge the world in a similar fashion to how He judged Egypt, and they told the story about the Israel Israel being set free from Egypt over and over and over again in their history and it's all throughout the old testament you can read it in there probably 15 20 times mm -hmm. so here's so they, they kept telling him and then they kept saying but if you're not doing what you're supposed to do god's going to come and judge us again and people would go oh back to the 10 plagues you know and they would they would remember these plagues um pharaoh was a type of antichrist uh I've got Micah 715 it written in here and I don't know why. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I don't, I don't remember marking it. Micah 714? Yeah. So. 715. 715, okay. There's Malachi. Surprise for whoever gets to Micah first. Mm, I never could find um uh, I got it. I, oh I got it. Oh, right yeah. Oh, here it is. It says, um, As in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt, I will show them wonders. The nations shall see and be ashamed of their might, of all of their might. They will put their hand over their mouth and their ears will be deaf. deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They will crawl into holes like the, makes of the snakes of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of you. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgressions of the remnant of his heritage? So, he, you know, here's, here's an Old Testament prophet telling them, sooner or later, just like in Egypt, this is going to happen. Right. Okay. Seven what? Seven, fourteen. Seven, fifteen. Oh. Or fifteen all the way through nineteen. I just oh, got and there. verse twenty. It said, uh, verse 19, he will again have compassion on us, will subdue our uh, iniquities. Oh, go, let me go back. Verse eight, ha, second half of verse 18. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us, will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea, and you will give truth to Jacob and mercy to Abraham, which you have sworn to our fathers of old, days of old to do. So there's the promise. Turn to God and he will have mercy. Mm -hmm. All right. Now he chose to clear our sins through Christ. And that's where the Jews have fallen short. Of course, right now we've talked about Israel being a so such a secular nation that the, they're, it's horrible. It, it's, it's really, really strange to go to the land of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and walk the land and the people that are living there have no clue the holiness of the property, of the ground they're on. Wow. So the Pharaoh was a type of Antichrist. He was defeated by God in the same way that the Antichrist in Revelation will be defeated, will be miraculously defeated. Verse 6, it says, So the seven angels who had seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So they prepared. They they were <coughs> you know, taking a deep mm -hmm. breath, getting ready to blow their trumpets. Verse 7, the first angel sounded, and the hail, hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all of the green grass was burned up. Kind of like the third seal. What was the third seal? Um, where he talks about uh, the scales in the, in, in the, um, the black horse, the third, the okay, third horse, yeah, yeah. and he mm -hmm. had the scales and a quart of wheat for a dinner of day's yeah. wages, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's kind of like, well, he's going to burn up everything, so that's there's the there's the famine, right? Mm -hmm. Right, a third of the trees and a third of the grass. Mm -hmm. That means no cattle will eat. Right. Mm -hmm. That means people aren't going to eat. Right. Um, so it's real similar to this third seal. And then in in Exodus, when he's talking about 
the fire and brimstone raining down on the, you know, and in Sodom and Gomorrah, he destroyed yeah. it. So this is real similar to that, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I want to say, yeah. So it, all, it, it all ties right? together. Yeah. You can have hail and fire mixed together, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. it mingled, and it mingles with, mingled with blood. Um, it's typical of God to mingle it with blood because blood is what has to be sacrificed. And the blood is maybe maybe that of the martyrs that have been killed. No, yeah. Nobody really knows. Yeah. And it's going to trigger worldwide volcanic activity. It's going to fill <laughs> it's going to fill the atmosphere with ash. Do y'all remember when um, the mountain in Washington D.C. erupted and had to be in the eighties? Yeah, yeah. I was young. <laughs> anyway, there. St. St. Helens is that the name of it? I don't remember. I don't and it erupted. Well, I was in Canada at the time oh, on a wow. fishing trip, and the ash cloud from Washington D.C. blew across and darkened the sky. Wow. All right. It took it a week to get there, but it darkened the sky wow. in Canada. Wow. So here we have worldwide catastrophe. The sky is going to fill with ash, and it's going to appear red like blood. Mm -hmm. There's a firestorm. On a worldwide scale, scale, the globe will be enveloped with smoke and lost pasture lands, and the death toll will be enormous from it. <laughs> you know, verse 8. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures of the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. He's talking about a great mountain, maybe a meteor, maybe a rocket. We don't know, okay? Mm -hmm. But something that is burning with fire is going to fall into the sea and it's going to turn like into blood, just like the Nile River did during Exodus, mm -hmm. okay? It's going to, it's not going to be like blood, and it's because it would say it became blood. Mm. He was, you know, because the other places he said, yes, a mountain blood. like. Yeah. Or something like, right? Mm -hmm. He says it Turned became blood. blood. Yeah, right. That's what it okay. Says. That means people are gonna die of thirst. The sea creatures are gonna die. Kill the fishing industry. Mm -hmm. Ships are gonna be destroyed. <sighs> Verse ten. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and the springs of the water. And its name of the star was Wormwood. <laughs> a third of the star. And many men died from the water because it was made bitter. The word Wormwood means bitter root. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Do y'all remember Chernobyl? I know I'm talking to a bunch of babies here. I feel so old when I, I talk to you guys. I, I know All right? about it. I'll... The Chernobyl nuclear reactor meltdown yeah. was the worst atomic catastrophe in the history of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right? You still... Thing, it's still restricted. Nobody, you still can't go there. Yeah, it's still things are growing there. there. That's it's, right. it's, you know, and research you, on you know it. You know what blows me away is that a cockroach can survive. survive there. Survives, yeah. <laughs> it's wild. The word Chernobyl <laughs> is Yugoslavian for wormwood. Are we talking about a nuclear problem here? Uh, Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just coincidence they named their nuclear reactor after a word out of the Bible? I don't know. But wormwood is an actual herb. herb. It's a reedy plant that grows and it makes water bitter. It makes things bitter. It's a very oh. bitter tasting. Okay. Okay. Um, it's still sold today. You can Google it. You can order it on from Amazon. You can order it from Walmart. You can wormwood. It's crazy. Hmm. So, really? Yeah. I, I looked weird. it up. It's like, what? So is this part of the sixth seal? that we read about a couple weeks ago? Maybe. I don't know. Huh. It's uh, crazy, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, it's, the word wormwood means to make toxic. Mm. It's used eight times in the Old Testament, meaning bitterness or poison water. Mm. So it's not an uncommon word. And they would know exactly what it meant. It meant poison. Right. They knew it. Um, chapter... Or verse 12, then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, so a third of them were darkened, 
a third of the day did not shine likewise the night and I likewise the night so we're we're getting remember in the plague where the sun didn't shine in the mm -hmm. Egyptian plagues and it, made, it was dark in the day and mm -hmm. could be similar mm -hmm. could be the smoke from all the fires could be the smoke from the rockets, the asteroids, the whatever it is that's destroying everything else. Mm. You know, when we have a, a solar eclipse, how the <coughs> it gets dark temporarily, mm -hmm. this is talking about for days at a time. Wow. And not only the sun, but the moon and the stars. We're talking, you know, first of all, he's already destroyed the infrastructure yeah. of, mm -hmm. of every country, right? He's already mm -hmm. destroyed it with everything else, so there will be no dark. It'll be dark. Um, you know, when the sun doesn't shine, it's going to cause global cooling. There will be, uh, what do you call those things? Glaciers. Glaciers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There'll be glaciers. There'll be, you know, the, the earth will be covered again. Mm. It is crazy. What's going to happen to all this? The first four trumpets deal with the ecosystem of Earth. All right? Huh. Every single one of this is speaking specifically to Earth. And then verse 13, he says, And I looked and heard an angel flying. And the word angel there is also used as eagle. I heard an eagle flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of Earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. He says, whoa, 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 representing the three trumpets that still have not sounded. And these three trumpets are demonic. Oh. This is releasing. He said, then the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star falling from heaven. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. So when we get to verse chapter yeah. nine, we'll have some more. Mm. You know, he, he, angel is saying, this angel is saying, you think this is, you think this was bad? You just, wait just wait and, and see what's coming. See. Mm -hmm. That's scary. Mm -hmm. That is. For them, not us. No. Not me. This whole thing is God coming mm -hmm. back with his mercy. He yep. did not kill everybody. Right. His mercy is still there. He's yep. still saying, repent, repent, repent. Mm -hmm. And it's like. The angel's saying, "What is it going to take for people to oh, repent? People repent?" Yeah. So you don't think, you don't think at this point there are people that are repenting? And there are. They are because okay. remember right. they, they, still, they, are the, they were still going the, into the right. yeah. Okay. The martyrs are going. These are the okay. ones that come out of. Yes. These are the ones that are in. They're non-believers at the beginning of the mm -hmm. wrath, and they're going to be the martyrs that come out of. Yes. But and, they're still not. But it's a continuous. Serious coming yeah. out of it's not it's not it's going to happen one time this right. is people mm -hmm. are going to continue right. to turn to the lord mm -hmm. so there will be innocent people that get caught up in this and die right i don't know there's yeah. innocent people that die in hurricanes yeah, yeah. that's true and are we still in the that's seven true. year tribulation yes yeah. this is the second half of the seven year and then the thousand year reign oh we haven't got there yet. okay yeah well, we yeah. still got to get through the beast and the woman <laughs> of the sea and all the other there. stuff so christians could be caught up in that yeah caught up in this. right well, they will be becoming Christians. At this point, yeah. I believe the church has been raptured. Yeah. Okay. okay. At this that's, point. That's yeah. what I always say. Yeah. Um, uh, and when that happens, people are going to go, wait a minute. What my wife just told me is true. And they're going to start doing, yeah. I believe. Because yeah. they're the martyrs that are coming uh, out of the tribulation. Okay. 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 Right. The first three and a half years, we're going to be here. <laughs> we're going to go through the stuff in the, seal, in the seals. We're going to go through that stuff. I, I believe myself. But once the Antichrist is revealed... I think is the, my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. We pray. I, I really hope we're taken yes. out before the seals, but yeah. I'm not going to count on it. Yeah. You can't count on yeah. that. Right. Um, Amos chapter 8, verse 9. It's talking about the sun, moon, and stars. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass in that day, the day of the Lord, says the Lord God, that I will make the sun go down at noon and I will darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feast into mourning and your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on every waist and baldness on every head and I will make it like mourning for an only sun and its end is like a bitter day. And the rest of Amos talks about 
the rest of the wrath of God. I was sending famine and destruction and stuff. So it's also the global devastation that's talked about in Revelation. It's also in Isaiah. It's in Joel. Um, men were going to freeze to death because of the sun being darkened. I mean, it, it's it's going to be a calamitous, that's not even a good enough word, time on this earth. Um but God's mercy is still available even during all of this. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the days of wrath are coming. <laughs> the day I cannot emphasize that enough. The days of God's wrath are coming. I have a little plaque on my sign. God's coming. God's coming back and he ain't happy. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Um, we live in pleasure and comfort and we don't need to think about the day of wrath. Right. He said, and um, I think it's in Ezekiel 33. It says, As I live, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from the, his ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die? Mm -hmm. There's God's pleading mm -hmm. for us to turn back to him. Mm -hmm. That's his grace and his mercy. And the scripture that came to my mind is, Seek the Lord while he may yet be found. Call upon him while he is near out of Isaiah 55. We have an opportunity right now to share with the world the love and mercy and grace of God because we know what's coming. Yeah. Yes. And if we're not doing that, then we are just as culpable as mm -hmm. they are in sending them, mm -hmm. you know, in allowing this to happen to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what's got me thinking about. You know, how can, mm -hmm. how can we not reach out to our unsaved yeah. family. Mm -hmm. How can we not reach out to those neighbors that are yeah. unsaved? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not to tell them the wrath that's coming, yeah. but to share with them the love of Christ that will right. prevent, that will save them from the wrath. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just, how can you not? I'm going to use this little book. It's like Revelation for Dummies mm -hmm. that um, Christy loaned me. And this is a quote from J.H. Milton, who was a biblical scholar. Um, I didn't get it. I didn't look him up. I didn't get enough information on him to share any more about that. But J.H. Milton, if you want to, he's written a bunch of books. All right, listen to this. Long has the old world left to drive its crimes, to jeer at Noah's odd notions, and fling defiance in the face of God. He has left us a long time to do this. But presently, the earth broke down beneath their feet and their lifeless bodies crashed upon each other amid the waves of an ocean world. See, when Noah built the ark, it had never rained on the earth before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. It had never, they're, they're like, I didn't know. It was, what are you talking mm -hmm. about? Mm -hmm. All right. And then not only did it rain, but he opened the ground and water gushed from the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they were like, it was an ocean world. The trampled law will assert its rightful honor, and Christ will not endure the smiting, the taunts, and the wrongs forever. And with when these trumpets once give out their clamor, the vibrations will run through the universe, and everything created for human blessedness shall turn into a source of disaster and trouble to them that know not God and obey not the gospel of Christ. Mm. God is going to use the entirety of creation to bring destruction on man mm -hmm. because we are so hard-headed and stubborn yes. and evil. It's kind of it's kind of scary, but at the same time, mm -hmm. his mercy is new every day. Mm -hmm. He calls us, he pleads with us mm -hmm. to turn to him, to repent. The first sermon God Jesus preached was, Repent for the kingdom of God is near. Mm -hmm. How much more near is it than it was when Jesus was alive? The kingdom of God is near. We have got to get this right, you guys. You know, we haven't even gotten to the locust and the ugh, all of the really scary stuff in the book of Revelation. Um, it's This is serious stuff. And the question is, why would a good God allow this? He's just 
see his trying to say, hey, door. I'm God. You should have turned to me That's right. long ago. I'm trying to let I, you know, hey, look, this is what's going to happen. If, I you know, created you, you know. and... He's, 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 he's punishing us. Yeah. Yeah, he's punishing you. And you have me. thrown it in my yeah. face for yeah. thousands of years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you And you continue to do yep. so. Yep. And the... You know, yeah. the only way you can I, get... I mean, his, his patience is just... Amazing. I, I can't even fathom. So, there are some children in our lives that will not respond until they get spanked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, there are some children in our lives that you will take not respond. Away from them. I'm, I, I'm I sad. Yeah. But that, that's how I come <laughs> to the Lord. Exactly. Because, you know, and he spiked me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I lost some I have serious been... things in my life. Mm -hmm. um, me too. And, right? yeah. yeah. So I, I was so hard headed that it. But, you know, but, but we know the good news. But I'm happy and I live in joy mm -hmm. now. That's and right. peace. And we know the good news of the gospel. Mm -hmm. oh, Marie, it says Revelation. It's backwards, I know. <laughs> God's word for the biblically inept. Yeah. <laughs> does, that, does that help? It's an old book. I was looking at it, and the, some of the it's stuff he uses. It's actually Amy's book. No, it's Amy's book. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. she let me borrow it. I have one on Amazon for twelve ninety nine. A used book. Okay. okay. Yeah. It was actually published in nineteen ninety eight. So a lot. Yeah. Of, some of the yeah. references in here are kind oh, of seven ninety nine. I'm sorry. Um, but it's still it's still yeah. available in print, and it's really kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't necessarily agree with everything that I've read in it, but yeah. hey, I don't agree with everything I've read about on the internet either. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I am doing a lot of research, a lot of study, and then I'm asking the Holy Spirit to tell me what it is He wants me to share, what it is that take IG. Yeah, he, yeah mm -hmm. because there's so much stuff. I sat down this afternoon. Uh, or this, this morning and went over my notes and as I was going over my notes I kept going oh, oh yeah you don't forget to you gotta oh, yeah, add this don't forget this mm -hmm. well then you then I read this and I gotta put, print this off the computer and I got this in my brain I finally put it all away I did finish the message yesterday I put it all away I said I'm done mm -hmm. I walked away anything that God wants me to say that's not in my notes he's gonna have to remind me because right now I'm making myself crazy with it. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so again I appreciate y'all tuning in um, listening, uh, share this on your Facebook page. The Book of Revelation is incredibly, incredibly important for people to to study and understand, to hear, to read, and to do. Uh, we have found we have found that in our own walk. Be blessed, and we will not be here next Friday. We'll be at the women's conference. Please attend if you can. Um, and then we will uh, be back the Friday after that with chapter 9. <laughs> Y'all yep. have a great day. Be blessed. Don't say Bye. Bye.